Rise from the Ashes, Day 2, Trial Former. Wait, so is this going to be a two-part trial? That's... oh boy. That's, uh... that's gonna be interesting. Alright, from chapter start. February 23rd, 9.34 a.m., District Court, Defendant's Lobby Number 2. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there are still a lot of, uh... gray areas. Or rather, the whole thing is just one big gray area. Don't worry about me. No matter what the outcome, I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. The defendant is called to the trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Skye, you? You remind me a lot of Mia, but there is one decisive difference between you and her, and that is, you're not a defense attorney. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. My first trial without uh, Faye helping me. No one's going to bail me out this time. True, it's going to be weird not having uh, Maya there. I'll be in there alone. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. Uh, I mean, we have a bit of stuff, but it's still gonna be really hard. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. February 23rd, 10 a.m., District Court, or, uh, courtroom number, no number 9. Oh. I was used to like number 1, number 2, number 3. Number 9. The court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has begun, uh, has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth. I haven't been in court since Edgeworth's trial. It's been a while now. I hope that, I hope that personal feelings will not be part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well. Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Wow. He's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. However, she will now pay for the uh, pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime, a professional witness. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Starr, to the stand. The cough up queen. Hmm, haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Oh, ho Caviar! I've never eaten caviar before. The judge is really wolfing it down. Ah, and for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, and you, sir. Did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? Is it- it is too- it is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, Your Honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty it hurts. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. <laughs> what? Uh, what is... Okay, <laughs> pickled tapioca, first of all, and why has this become a food testing court? What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Name, profession, now. Me? The name's Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland, uh, running Lunchland these days. Is, is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. <laughs> Hurry it up. Mmm. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call the police to provide us with a description of the crime. 
Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am, uh, professional. Uh, huh? What exactly does that mean? Until two years ago, Miss Angel Starr was with a special investigator with the was a special investigator with the police. She was a first-rate homicide detective. What? Miss Starr was a detective? Uh huh. Uh, I know who you are now. Cough up. Cough up, Queen Angel Starr, Your Honor. Long time no see. Uh, very well. Y you may continue with the description, Miss Starr. Just who is this lady? Yeah, I have no idea. Oh, uh, we're gonna find out later, probably. Uh, if I might have the court's attention over here. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider se separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep us from taping up prosecutor spaces, yes? Uh, the crime took place by a car in the back of A block in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with a knife and went to drive the body uh, drive the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, your honor. Floor plans added to the court record. Wait, so she was there at the murder then. Uh, witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Hmm. Immediately after that, I apprehended the Chief Prosecutor. Hmm. It seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright? Uh, I can't agree on your principle, Your Honor. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your wars, Miss Starr. Wait, are they talking about me? Witnesses account, witness testimony. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend when I sensed something. Perhaps it was my finely honed detective instincts working. Then, through a wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then, she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into, the dete into Detective Goodman's chest. In other words, Made sweet love to his chest with the business end of a broadsword, as they put it. Hmm. Bring a lunchbox to your boyfriend. How touching. Hmm. As you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than the point of the knife which you saw being stabbed in the Detective Goodman. So, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I... I'm still thinking about that. It's merely a flesh wound. <laughs> it is only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Very well. Mr. Wright, you can cross-examine the witness. Yeah, that was that was more than a flesh wound. Okay. Uh, witnesses account. I always knew a day like this would come. Okay, first I'm gonna press on that. Why did you know a day like this would come? Yeah, how did you know? I respect the prosecutor's ab uh, basic abhorrence of crime. Born some crap. Uh, yeah, their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods would always lead to tragedy. Tragedy. The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. Given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim, killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Star, do you have some personal, uh, something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator, and if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired. To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro, as you know, my testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well, you may continue, Miss Star. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. Ugh. I may have to just press through everything, just to see what I get. This boyfriend, he's a de the detective? Not that boyfriend, the security guard. That boyfriend? You, you have several? Yes, this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? Uh, the yet another boyfriend position is still open for applicants. Uh, I'll stick with the lunch, thanks. Note to self, the judge had to think before replying. 
<laughs> okay. She's gonna take notes on this. Uh, the security guard room is in the lot, in A block. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from up there. Okay, so she was in the glass room then, I'm uh, guessing? That would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunchboxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in the B block. So, she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. When I sent something, perhaps it was my finally home detective instincts working. Uh... Finally honed... Sent something? Okay, let's... What did you... You sent something? So you're saying you had a premonition of the murder. It felt like... How would you say? Oh, yes. It was like that feeling you get when you view a pumpkin chalk full of seeds. I have no idea what that means. Neither do I. Neither do... Neither does Phoenix. Speaking of detective's instincts, wasn't the victim Mr. Brooks Goodman also a detective? Yes, well, he was like, uh, young cheese. Uh, young cheese. A pale white cheese not yet tangy with experience on the streets. A greenhorn. Huh. I, of course, am hard. Yellow. Sharp as attack. Uh, I bet you stink too. In any case, there in the lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. Then, through a wire fence, I saw the chief par uh, prosecutor standing next to a garish car. I guess I should keep pressing? Like... Yeah. I don't really... Like, remember your statement from before, it's really hard to... Uh, I just need to see if I can squeeze anything wrong out. By garish car, you mean? Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. M Mr. Edgeworth's? Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's, wasn't it? Indeed, it was. Huh, what an odd case this is. And the person you saw, are you, you are sure it was the defendant? I saw her from uh, no further than 30 feet away. I'm certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always complain. Witness, in your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. I'll fry you like a fritter. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. That... That was inspiring. <laughs> that, that, that was inspiring. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Judge. You are very insightful this time around. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cry, plagiarism? I may be relegated to the lowly post of lunch lately, lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. Uh, a photograph? You, you took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my free reflexes took over and snapped. I took a picture. In fact, one of my lunchboxes is rigged with the camera. I suppose that's more exciting than hanging it around your neck. Uh, this is my first time seeing this photograph. You think I'd show it to you? A prosecutor? Think again. My boyfriend works in the photography division of the criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. Crime photo added to the court record. Uh oh, that is unmistakably Lana Sky. Okay, I want to look at this photo real quick. Can I notice anything? She's looking in the trunk of the car. I don't see the knife. Uh oh, that is unmistakably Lana Sky. So what was the defendant doing at the time? The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Okay. Crime photo? Okay, she was holding a knife in her right hand at the time. I... uh, let me look at this photo. Okay, she's not holding... okay, left hand on that. Is she holding? Oh, uh, it's kind of blurry. Because it's black and white, but I, she's not holding a knife there. But she was saying she was holding a knife at the time. She's not holding a knife. Uh... 
She's not holding a knife here. Uh, do I want to press on this or present? I'll just present that she's... Uh, actually, this is tough. Do I want to press on that? No, I'll present this and say she's not holding a knife in the photograph. Uh, that was just one of the first things I noticed. Objection. And you witnessed this? You saw Miss Skye stab the victim with the knife. As I've already said, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon's world lunch. Hmm, I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But, isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. This is a photograph you took of the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Skye not holding a knife? Aham. Uh -huh. Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. Let's be a little more careful with our evidence, shall we? Is it you that needs to be more careful? It is you that needs to be more careful, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. H how can you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stain on the chief prosecutor's coat? It's a black and white photograph. Ah, uh, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem. Except you. Mr. Wright, are you going to just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Uh, you gotta be- you got a better idea? Uh... Uh, do I have anything else to press on this? Wait, she said she took this picture the moment of the murder. The moment of the crime as photographed by Angel Star. The moment of the crime. She said this was the cr a photo of the crime, like, exactly during it. Obje so, if I at least object now, I can get her to change her statement. And maybe if she changes her statement, I could find another, uh, something else in there that's wrong. So I'm gonna go with objection. Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it was- uh, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. That- that's it? If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering a jumbo-sized lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was like it was a premeditated murder. Premeditated? How did you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Well, are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh If it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. Uh huh. Oh. These gloves do seem a tale of tale, to tell a tale of pre, uh, premeditation. Premeditated murder. A serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. Well, she did change the testimony, at least what I wanted. The murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. Oh. Uh. Hmm. Let me look through the rest of it. It... It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Star's testimony is flawless. Sounds pretty fatal to me. W what do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. Uh, don't smile like that. Okay, so some way to deliver lunchbox. Then through wire fence, the murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. I'm just gonna press saving it. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves, like driving gloves? The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves of the kind used for autopsies. In other words, when it came to, uh, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. It's the only possible conclusion one can make. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Uh huh. Impressive. I'm sorry they took you off the force, Miss Star. This is bad. She's got them thinking it was all planned. 
If she can prove this claim, the trial's always o already over. I gotta think of the way to show it wasn't premeditated. Okay, that's my only tip. It's only a flesh wound. Okay. So, I gotta prove it wasn't premeditated. So, against any of her statements, is there anything I can show that this wasn't premeditated? This picture right here. So, we know one, we know that she didn't have the knife, but she has blood stains on her and she has gloves on. We don't see the body, but this is said to be after. Wouldn't there be blood stains on the ground, first of all? Unless there was no, well, he did bleed out to death. What about the knife? She didn't have the knife, so what happened to the knife? When I sent something, finally honed, then through the wire fence, saw the chief prosecutor. Murder was planned, the rubber gloves prove it. But even if the rubber gloves were there, where was the knife? It's my question. Did she leave it in him? Was the was the okay, where's the knife found? Murder weapon found in Edgeworth's tool box. Oh, wait, it was found in Edgeworth's tooth box. Uh, truth toolbox. It has blood on it, but no prints. So she has the gloves on, which explains but for the no prints, but she didn't have the weapon. Oh, how I Can I use the knife as evidence to prove she did wasn't to try to like go towards she wasn't premeditating the murder? I still don't know what that is yet. I don't have enough information on that. We uh, know that. So she called her sister beforehand. So the murder. I mean, I can only think of the knife and pressing on the statement and bring it up. And I still want to say, like, where was the knife during that part? I. Uh, this is risky. <laughs> this is really risky. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell lunches for a living, you know? That's a knife. THE knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. What's with this case? The blood murder weapon, a red car, all belonging to the prosecutor there. The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? Mommy, are prosecutors bad people? The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder, and that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves indi do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing, the murder weapon? Oh. The knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Ah, uh, well, that is that is true. How, well, it also brings up the question: Why would the how would she know the, what knife was there unless she knew beforehand that Edgeworth had the knife? So if I didn't know that if she didn't know the knife was there, she wouldn't have had a murder weapon at all. Order, order, order. Great. Now the tide is turning in our favor. Great show, Mister Wright. My sister's as good as free. No, she's not. We still got a long way to go. Oh, Edgeworth. I did miss that from the last trial. Even though the last trial was, like, really good. I did miss him doing that little pose there. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is... Humble pie. Wh what? Did you just make a pun, Edgeworth? You terrible human being. I hope you weren't deluding yourself to thinking into thinking the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. But... This shoots in the hole of, uh, this shoot, but this shoots a hole in the pull premeditated theory. Bah. The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is the lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution needs to prove, nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know, as well as I do, that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If she wasn't, what would she have been wearing? I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you? My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really now. 
Angel's deduction. Witness testimony. <coughs> Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Gunman. That's why she called the victim all the way he, uh, to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge a knife in again and again. Wait. One knife wound. Okay. So, I already found a contradiction. Okay. That's good. <laughs> I was about to say, uh, that was pretty. That was a pretty obvious contradiction, though. Nothing else could drive a human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. That was a pretty easy... The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So, if I order pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. Well, I already know what I'm going to be cross-examining, but I, I guess I'll press on a couple statements first, just to see if I can get any more information. Okay, she intended. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge, grudge against the victim. Well, we know she had no grudge. What kind of grudge? Well, I wouldn't know that. Of course you don't. That's because she didn't have a grudge. Rookie. Have a lunchbox here. Now, what's inside? H how am I supposed to know? See? We agree that there is a lunchbox here, but we don't know what's inside. A person's life is like a lunchbox with pretzels. Don't you agree? Lunchbox with pretzels? Uh, I get it. That's why you my lunch was so salty. The lunch... The judge isn't very good with metaphors. <laughs> no, he's not. The suspect had a grudge against Detective Goodman. Will you tell us your basis for thinking this? It's simple. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. I'm gonna present an autopsy report against that because there was only one knife or and Okay. Present. You say she stabbed him again and again. But you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my moss surprise. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. W what do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this. But take a look. Oh, oh, uh, Edgeworth actually... Yeah, Edgeworth's gonna be the one to explain it. The autopsy report states that the death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Ah, uh, ha! Huh, you're right! Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. What a honk. He's my hero. Really. What about my objection? No one noticed? No, no one did. I'm sorry, Phoenix. Well, witness? You got the crime scene. Uh, you got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood, but now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So? You're saying you mistook something for blood. When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. It's blood of blood from the victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Oh, uh, I always skip that. I always manage to skip, like, one little part of a sentence. Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how the gas- uh, how, that's how ghastly the, the scene was. Wait, muffler? Was she wearing a muffler? She wasn't wearing a muffler, was she? No, she's not wearing a muffler. Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how the ghastly the crime scene was- the whole scene was. No, she's not wearing a muffler, though. Wait, yeah, the fuck? She's- There's no muffler there. Where's that? No, she's not wearing a muffler. Miss Star, I demand ex an explanation. The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. Well, what The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler and- uh, The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proved it yourself. With this photograph. Huh? B but that... that can't be. Only a true professional could be so clueless. I'm sure you'll make a good lunch lady, have no fear. Huh, oh, harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection, chopped liver? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Phoenix is now like, I I'm objecting, so Phoenix objects, and then Edgeworth just 
finishing it off and blowing the wound. He's 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 the one actually saying it. But it was there. A scarf. No, not that, but something red. Really? Well now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude. Now back to business. Wh what? Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. Yeah, true. We couldn't get any any dirt on that or anything that would be contradicting that. We couldn't change the fact that uh, they still believe she stabbed him. The next testimony might just be the moment of truth. Apprehending the suspect. After the murder, the suspect attended, attempted to run uh, behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah, uh, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my uh, had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made me es uh, made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is, futi is futile. You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike a, uh, like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is kind of like a snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Note to self, Attorney Wright gets bitten by <laughs> gets bitten by snake. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, that was the oil drum that fell over. Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Roar. Well, very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine, if you will. Hmm. Apprehending the suspect. After the murder, the suspect... Okay, I know what the partition she's talking about is. Because on the floor plans... Let me just look at this. So she, so she was saying she was about 30 feet away, somewhere over here. The murder happened around the trunk of the car. She ran off around here, around the that big part, that little, that part, that wall, that partial wall there, towards the telephone and the security room. So. Angel was over here somewhere, 30 feet away. Okay, so I know what I know what the partition she's talking about is. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. How did you catch her quickly? She was 30 feet away. You say quickly. Were you that? Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm. Maybe I should press her for more details. Oh. Do I want more details about how he caught she got her so fast? I guess I'll press her. I need to I hope I don't think this is too risky. Just to press her for some more details. She's been slipping up a lot. I'd like to see this on the floor plans, just to be safe. Yeah, that's nice. The lunch lady car was She was a visitor, thus she parked in block B block. So you witnessed the murder from here. That would make it about thirty feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Yes, that's right. But there was a chain link, link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing. The cop up queen. Lunch lady athlete, indeed. It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. So she. You could climb over that fence? That fence looked pretty. Like. All, I, I thought that fence was like all the way up to the roof of the area. Hmm. I guess it was, I guess I was mistaken. I need to check that if we, I get another chance to investigate. Uh, anyway, uh, so she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, I was about to say, your sister doesn't look like she's that slow. She could probably could run really fast, especially if she was prepared to murder. Yeah, the fence was about nine. Oh, yeah, there is a little. Uh, yeah, how? That would take a while to climb up. Yeah, the fence. Uh, that fence was about nine feet high too. How come this guy didn't get away? When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. Hmm. 
Okay, so... We still have a contradiction back then, but we didn't... Say it. I guess. Or we didn't press on it. Anyway, uh... So... Why did she mention a muffler? That's also something I'm wondering. She mentioned the muffler. What exactly did she say? If I remember exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard from uh, her say was the word muffler. Just that one word? So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but, uh, but to someone else. Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? You mean this cell phone? Hmm. Let me look at the cell phone real quick. Uh... So the last call was made to the sister, right? Uh, made a call to her sister Emma, 518 on the day of the murder. As for the... By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately. My memory. It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see? No, the court doesn't see, Miss Sar. The chief prosecutor first used, uh, attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Why was she trying to get to the phone? Apparently it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone. Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm, good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You should, of course, add this to your testimony. Why, did, why was she going towards the phone, though? That's what I'm wondering. The thing I do, uh, do to please this rookie defense attorney. Cell phone update in the court record. Hmm. So she gave up trying to use the phone on the wall and just used her cell phone. How did you... Okay, so first of all, you were climbing the leak fence, which would have taken a little bit. How did she know she was trying to... I'm just gonna press on this. I got a couple questions about this. Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha. Uh -huh. I was going to ask the same thing. I'll only say this one time, so listen close, rookies. Okay. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition, so she went to the telephone. She picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. How did you know she picked up the phone? So she pulled out her own cell phone out of her pocket. And during that time, you climbed over the chain link fence. And when I boldly grabbed her arm, the chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this. What is it, Mr. Wright? Hmm. The chief prosecutor made uh, made to escape, but Angel Star against Angel Star this isn't as good though. Oh, this is this is really weird. How would you? This is not. I, I have a feeling she's lying here. That just, it, it, this doesn't feel right at all. Like, how would she, the way she showed the floor plans, I don't know how she would get from here to here. No, she was on the telephone. And no, she hung up the telephone. And then, uh, got out her cell phone. Plus the whole fact that the cell phone was last used to call her sister, which is also making me suspicious. Because it was at 518, the murder was at 525? Uh, let me look real quick. <laughs> uh, died an hour and a half of 4 p.m. 2.30? Wait, no. Uh, was, uh, yeah, 2.30 maybe? I don't uh, But, I just... How... How would she get over that really huge fence? Climb it. No, she was on the telephone. Through the partition. Right here. And then, got her cell phone out. I mean, I don't understand if she knew she had her cell phone out, but why would you know she was on the telephone, and why wouldn't she just grab her cell phone? Why was she even going towards the telephone to begin with? Uh... Uh... I can't press her on this. Maybe if I present this and ask it... I mean, she's gotta be lying about what she saw. 
I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought that my knight in shining armor, pro uh, you would be my sh knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You, who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Starr, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. Ahem, let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true, you couldn't have possibly seen Miss Skye making that phone call. That, that's, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to say for so long. I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If you, uh, if indeed you were in the B block, you couldn't have seen it. Warg. Order, order. What is the meaning of this? It's simple, your honor. She was- she's not coughing up lunch, she's coughing up lies. Uh. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me to question. Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about... Uh, okay. She didn't lie about the order of events. I don't... No. Where, what she saw, or where she saw it. I think she lied about... Okay, maybe she's not lying about what she saw. But where she saw it? Yeah, she was somewhere else then. That's the only explanation I can think of. She didn't climb the chain link fence. She was on the inside. On the prosecutor side of the parking lot. I think that's what I'm going to go with. She was on the parking, uh... The prosecutor side of the parking lot. Where she saw it. She tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. It would be pointless for her to lie about it. Pointless to lie? I see. Yeah, it doesn't really change anything if she was lying about her access to the phone, which is why I was wondering about it. The witness did uh, actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. In other words, Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. A different location. Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now, uh, now points in one direction. The place from where uh, Miss Star witnessed the crime was here. So, possibly in the security room? Hmm. Yeah, maybe she was in the security room. That's what I'm thinking of. Because it still would have taken her time, but she could have definitely run down from the security room. And she would have seen the telephone, she would have been able to see over the wall into the murder. Uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll go with security room. It's a little risky, I don't know exactly. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second level, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm. She would just have to be, uh, she would have to be able to see the emergency phone from up there. But why there? There are many other places she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, your honor. The witness not being, uh, part of the prosecutor's office couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime here, uh, crime and the back of the partition is here. Okay. I remember your testimony. You said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Okay, so she was in the security room with her boyfriend. Well, Miss Star? How many years have I been getting the better of men to think that the tables could be turned? Today, a man has gotten the better of Angel Star. Order, order, witness. What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Skye? Um, Mr. Wright, doesn't this stri strike you as a bit odd? Why did Miss Star lie? 
That doesn't make sense. She has a grudge. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. The photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. The truth still stands. It still stands. I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? Me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Yeah, this is a good... <laughs> I need to review what I know, okay. Miss Starr witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B-Block. It must be a, make a vital difference, but what? What would change? Hmm. Okay, so angle, view to the crime, that doesn't matter. We just discussed it doesn't actually matter that she saw the phone and the crime. She could have just said she saw the crime. Difference in lighting? I don't think so. The whole place was lit up fairly well. Distance, distance to the crime is... Yeah, distance to the crime. It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. My condolences, Mr. Wright. But one look at the floor plans, and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. What she saw is not in the question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Starr, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Sky? Well, witness, you... Yes? You ordered the squid wheels, right? The quality of my lunches has gone from low to inedible. I was bringing a PB&J lunch with fresh bro uh, boysenberry to my jam to my boyfriend. Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass walled station. She ran around, ran down. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. Wait, what? No, she said now she's saying she ran all the way around, really? That's why I had to go through the visitors parking in B block. That's quite a detour. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. Five minutes? Five minutes is a long time. Hmm, this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it, I have a photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it all my finest plastic spork. You have a point. And the spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely. Uh oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? Oh, okay. So, she's saying she ran all the way around. But in five minutes, wouldn't Lana have just run away? Like, wouldn't, wouldn't she have just run? Yeah, I'm just gonna raise an objection here. What, I, oh, like, she would just run away at that point. Like, it's, she had five minutes to get away. She could have just run out of an exit or something. Five minutes between the witnessing of a murder and the rest. Think about it. You could make pasta in that amount of time. If you like it all Dante. I've got lunchboxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. A five minute blink. Isn't that strange? Strange. If you were a criminal, what would you do with the five minutes, your honor? Well, um, I guess I fleed the scene. Hey. D -d don't get the wrong idea, I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run, but this time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime, she even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way, it's inconceivable. Y Yarg. Yeah, that's what I was questioning, like, why was she even there that long? Well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. She has a grudge against the defendant, and there is a blank in her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately. 
I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright! That was too close. I'm afraid the co that the cup up queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Wait, are we done with the trial for today? No, the former trial. This we have the this is the pre-trial or whatever, the, the first part of the trial. Oh, she's gonna go on? Mr. Ezra, you sort of ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to foist off the, on me. I prefer not to take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. What, what was that? Is this another one of the, her trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Stark. Ah. Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Woohoo! A triple decker! <laughs> really, Judge? He's just, he's loving this trial so far. The judge is just like, yes, food! Uh, out of the, uh, out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Really, you got bribed by food? Uh, let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the Lunchland motto says, you won't be disappointed. What you going to pull out of her lunchbox this time? Alright, witness testimony. Decisive evidence. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, to the matter of the victim's shoe, did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on the shoe. One, of course, was the victim's. And the other was the defendant, Miss Lana Skye's blood. The shoe proves it. It's Wallace. Decisive evidence. Okay, so that's from when she cut her hand, then? What? There was blood found on that shoe. Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is, the uh, why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple. As I've already said, I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And, you had blood tests performed. Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You should know the two rules of evidence law, Miss Stark. Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Is, is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth sure is so celebra uh, celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, this shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even a general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, uh. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. You could at least study some evidence law, really. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding. It appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of the evidence law. Well, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are ju probably judged. Victim Shu added the court record, so it's got her blood on it and the victim's blood on it. Let me look at this. Oh, the wrong thing. Uh, here we go. White enamel shoe bears the traces of blood from Goodman and Lana Sky. Okay, very well. Mr. Wright, you may begin the cross, uh, to cross-examine the witness. Decisive evidence. Cross-examination. Okay. Oh, so... So she should have mentioned it. Let's see. And now to the matter of the victim's shoe. I did not bring this... Did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. Okay. And the other was the defendant, Miss Lana Skies. The shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. Hmm. Okay, let me let me look at this real quick. So we have a shoe now. Oh, I can check the shoe. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Okay, where's the blood? Wait. Is that where the blood is? On the bottom? Would that mean there would have been a puddle of blood on the bottom of the shoe? Oh, no, there's the blood. What, 
What about the blood on the bottom of the shoe? Ah, there's blood here too. On the sole of the shoe? It's gotta be the victim's. He must, uh, he must have stepped on a, in the puddle of his own blood. All this blood, it's horrible. Hmm. This blood might be an important clue. I didn't even know I could check that. Okay, so there's blood on the bottom of the shoe. But if we check the photo, which is said to be taken after, there was no blood on the ground. I mean, I understand there being blood on top of the shoe with the stab, the blood might have dropped on there, like a couple drops of blood and her hand being cut. But... Why was there blood on the bottom of the shoe? Okay, I'm just gonna press against this. Or is there anything I can? Is there something about the shoe specifically I can press against? I mean, it's decisive evidence. Uh, okay, th there's missile on a sky's blood. The shoe proves it. It's full of decisive evidence, but it's not decisive because there's blood on the bottom of the shoe, which is... there was no blood stain anywhere, which I... Okay, let me just press on something here. I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Oh. Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some like your client. She's in enough hot water to make a whole batch of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or don't you have a problem with the shoe? A problem? This is critical. What's wrong with the victim's shoe? There's a problem. There's, there's a big problem here. There's blood on the bottom of the shoe, and there's no blood stains anywhere. There's no footprints anywhere. I mean, blood trail. I played, like, played a bunch of Yandere simulator. I know blood trails under your feet, but yeah, it's, it, it would have trailed under the feet at least a little bit. But there was no blood stains. Uh, there's, like, no blood stain under the murder area either. Just got stabbed and died of blood loss. Uh, yeah, there's a problem. I'm gonna go with that. If I'm not imagining things, I'd say there is one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. You're still young, rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is the contradi uh, what is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with this evidence. Uh, at the bottom of the shoe, <laughs> definitely. There we go. And... Uh... Yeah, r the right there. Is that technically on or should I go for like that right there in the back? Uh, I don't... Okay, I'm just gonna go for this. And present. I wonder if you noticed. This blood on the bottom of the shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Hmm, indeed. Quite a bit of blood, uh... Indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. More blood than there is on top. It makes sense, the victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about the blood on the bottom of the shoe? Well, the fact that there was... With this photo. Yeah, there was no blood on the bottom of the photo. Like, there would have been a blood puddle at least, or there would have been like a footprint or something. Yeah. Uh, I'll go with that, yep. Crime photo. The problem lies with the footprint. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why were any of the footprints found by the scene of the crime? Aha! Uh -huh. As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about the shoe. This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. If there were bloody prints, they would have been found. We checked the scene and we found nothing of the sort. Order, order, order. Well, witness? What? Huh? I, uh... Great going, Mr. Wright, but it's true that the lack of footprint uh, of a footprint is a contradiction, but then we have to ask, why wasn't there a footprint? Oh, that's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright, think. Hey, I don't know why there was it's not there. I'm just I'm just good at finding contradictions. <laughs> what? Hmm. Edgeworth's thinking about it now. 
I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more a devious than, than I give her credit for. We were hoodwinked into the, uh, to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. W what are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The client prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hand aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Roar. Alright, I'm gonna pause this before Edward goes on.